Hello and welcome to the session in which we will keep discussing audit planning. In the prior session, we looked at audit planning in general. In this session, we're going to look at the initial audit planning. What is the auditor expected to do as initial steps in the audit? Now, we're going to have subsequent lectures about audit planning, about more specific steps. But in this session, we're going to be focusing on the initial stage where we would look at four key tasks needed to be completed. What are those four key steps? First thing is we need to assess to determine whether we should accept a new client or whether we want to continue with, it, with an existing one. So we don't want to just take any client on and we're going to see why shortly. And even if we have an existing client every year, we would review whether we should keep this client or not. Again, why do we do that? We're going to discuss this in this session. But these decisions are practically made on a senior level, partner level, made by seasoned auditor capable of making critical decision. And the choice is made early to prevent unoccurring, unrecoverable, substantial cost. And that substantial cost could be in form of reputation. You don't want to associate yourself or your firm with a client that does not have integrity. Well, why not? Because that's going to influence the reputation of the audit firm. Two, you want to accept a client not only for the first year, you want to accept the client for many years. Therefore, when you assess the client, well, you can't say, I'll accept them now, and next year, if I don't like it, I would just, you know, I would, I, I would withdraw from the engagement. Why? Because usually when you take on an audit, the first year, there's not much of a profit. Because the first year, you're learning about the client, you're spending a lot of time and effort to do the setup work. Year two, you might break even, in year three, year four, this is where the auditors start to make more money. It doesn't have to be exactly that way, but the point is the first year, you don't make a lot of profit. It's when you do when you do the audit several years, you become more efficient. The second thing we want to know when we are through the initial stage of an audit is the reason why the client is asking for an audit. Why are they asking for an audit? The reason behind the client desire. Well, this information would influence subsequent planning. Why? Because depending on what the audit for, is the audit required by the shareholders because they want to review how the company is doing? Is the audit required for an initial public offering? Initial public offering means the company wants to sell their stock to the general public, to everyone. And the wider the public, the more public you have, the more risk you have. Because in case something bad goes, the public can sue you or they have the potential of suing you. Or is, this, or is this audit for a bank loan? So we have to understand what's the reason for the audit. And we're going to see, we're going to talk to the prior auditor, talk to the client, but that's something we have to learn about the client. Why do they want an audit? Now, if they're a publicly traded company, well, it's mandatory. They have to have an audit. Well, the question becomes, why do they want us to be their auditor and not their prior audit? Maybe their prior audit is cannot keep up with their growth. Maybe something else we need to find out. The third thing is, we need to understand, we need to establish, not understand, a mutual understanding with the client. Basically, spell this out in something called engagement letter regarding the engagement terms. We have to kind of have this understanding clear and we'll have one whole session about the engagement terms or the engagement letter. Fourth, the auditor will need to construct, basically map out an overarching strategy for the audit. Just Plan the audit overall, the big picture, in compensation, who's going to be on the audit, the staffing decision, and any requisite for audit specialist. We might need a specialist, for example, if we're auditing a software company, we're auditing oil and gas companies. We need specialists that understand the business because there are certain things we cannot put into a business context or we need to understand further. Therefore, an audit specialist is required. So in this session, we're going to talk a little bit more about accepting the new client, continuing with a new client, reasons behind the client desire, how do we learn about this, the engagement letter will be a separate recording. Let's go ahead and get started by talking about accepting a new client, discussing a new client. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. 
My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Now bear in mind, the public accounting field is a very competitive field. It means it's not easy to get a client. Attract and keep a client is a challenge. Nevertheless, you don't want to pick up any client because you have to be very careful in who you associated yourself with because you want to avoid those that have integrity issues, client with integrity issues, or client that keep, keep complaining about audit procedures or keep complaining about the fees. Now, some firms decline client from high-risk industries altogether. If you believe the software industry or the subprime lending is a high-risk industry, basically say, I am not going to take any clients from this industry because I consider it high-risk client. Also, smaller firms may avoid, it means don't take publicly traded companies audit. Why? Because if you do take publicly traded companies audit, now you are subject to the PCAOB registration. It means you have more cost. You need a larger staff usually for publicly traded companies. It's simply put, you don't want to get into this because you don't have the ability to keep up with the work. Therefore, you're shy away. You just say, I'm not going to take those clients. And when accepting and retaining clients, auditor must weigh the client risk against the firm's risk tolerance. If I'm going to take a risky client, how much am I willing to take? Because what's going to happen if that if that customer, if that company comes down, you know, the clients, the, the auditor's reputation will be harmed. So you have to be very careful. You have to balance potential gains against the acceptable level of risk. Now, what would you do when you have a new client? You are going to investigate the new client. Before they come on board, before you take them as a client, you do your due diligence. Well, you go through a thorough investigation into the company's suitability. Well, what would that involve? Well, this will involve assessing the company's reputation within the business community. You would look at top management. You would look at the company's past. Uh, do they get? Are they being um, investigated by any government or, or regulatory agencies? Are they being uh, sued by customers? And what type of legal lawsuits? Are they being sued by competitors? Are they infringing on, on any intangibles? You would look at their financial robustness. How, how well are they doing? You want to associate yourself with a client that's going to be in business in the, fut in, in the future. That's also important. You would also look at their past interaction with their former CPA firms. And we're going to talk about this shortly to the extent possible. And this is important because that's going to give you a lot of information about the client. Why are they, why are they looking for an audit? That's very, very important. We don't want to skip over that. For instance, you know, you should exercise caution when considering a new client from a recently established and rapidly expanding enterprise. Hold on a second. Are you saying because it's newly established and rapidly expanding, shouldn't this be good? Yes, this should be good. However, a lot of risk comes with that. What type of risk are we discussing here? Well, we're talking about the risk of rapidly, rapidly, rapidly expanding and management not being able to keep up with the work so that that that's that's a risky client that's a risky client also other factors we want to look at is do we want to take over this client well do we have the expertise or do we have the do we need the, the diversification do we do we need to diversify our portfolio for example uh, we want to have clients in many different industries. We don't want to be concentrated in one industry because in case something happened to that industry. These businesses often face financial troubles, pausing substantial liability risk for CPA firms. Also, the CPA firm must be sure that they are competent enough themselves, that they have enough people that, exp that understand the industry, that understand the business to undertake the engagement. This way, you want to make sure you're in compliance also with all independence criteria. And that's extremely important, but also being competent. Remember, people trust you as an auditor for two reasons. One is your independence. Two is your competency. Competency means you know what you're doing too, and you are independent. Now, how do you learn more about the new client? Communication with the predecessor audit. P past predecessor audit. You have to talk to the predecessor audit. You have to learn about these roles. When considering potential client previously audited by another CPA firm, auditing standard, they mandate you have to 
the new auditor to communicate with the previous auditor. You have to. It's not like, well, I may or may not do it. And why, what, why wouldn't you do it? Think about this. If you're auditing a new client, the first thing is asking them, what happened to the old client? Why are you asking me to perform this audit? This helps me, the new auditor, in assessing whether I should take the engagement or not. Okay, because such communication could tell me more about the integrity, highlight integrity concern. It could tell me about some accounting dispute between the old auditor and the client and the potential client, any audit process issues, any fee disagreement. Helping the new auditor makes an informed decision. You want to talk to the old client, to the old auditor. Can you just kind of pick up the phone and call them? Absolutely not. Although you are responsible for initiating the communication, okay, and the previous auditor, if you communicated with them, they must respond. However, however, this is important. You have to get the client's permission first. So you get the client's permission, then you contact the predecessor auditor, you're the successor auditor, and they have to respond. Okay, they have to share the information. Now, in, in unique cases, not they have to, they don't have to, but most likely they will. In unique cases, like legal issues or dispute, the response may be restricted because confidential information. If that's the case, if the client denies communication, or they said, you know, you cannot communicate with them, or the previous auditor response is, in, is incomplete, you're not satisfied with the response, you want to be careful in whether you want to take this engagement or not. Because who's hiding what? Is the, is the client hiding something? Is the previous auditor hiding something important that they don't want to tell us there's a legal dispute? Do we want to get into this? That's that's what you need to figure out. But communicating with the predecessor auditor, it's an excellent tool for the new auditor to learn more about the business because it's mandated. They have to do that as long as, the, of course, the client gives them permission to do so. Also, what can you do? So when you're considering a new client previously audited, you could also conduct additional research by consulting local attorneys, other CPAs, banks, and businesses. Just perform your own research. In complex situation, you might enlist a professional investigator. You want to look at the background and reputation of key management. Were they involved in fraud before? Because most likely if they were, there's, there's an integrity issue. This thorough investigation is necessary because you are taking on liability. There is no prior auditor. Where there is no prior auditor, you have to do that. Okay? Or the predecessor auditor don't share the information. Then you might have to spend some money to do your own investigation to determine whether you want to do this or not. Continuing client. Now, bear in mind, once you pick up a client, it doesn't mean you don't reevaluate your business relationship with them. You have to do it on a yearly basis. Because what happened is... Um, you have to do it more because now you know more about the client so you have more information so you have to reassess whether you should keep them a client or not so cpa review current clients annually to decide whether they want to continue or not because just because you have them as a client although it's financially lucrative you know if there's an integrity issue and they are they have a lot of dispute about audit process and they're just keep delaying the audit you have to be careful so past dispute on audit scope if they are not giving you enough information, they're not providing you timely access to what you need, uh, any dispute about the opinion, if they have unpaid, unpaid fees, or any other concern would lead to ending the association. You have to look at that on an annual basis. Also, the auditor might cease working with the client if the integrity concern arises. If any integrity concern arises, you want to dis disassociate yourself with that client. It might be costly, but it's cheaper or better in the long run even without the mentioned condition a cpa firm may cease client audit stop due to heightened risk if there's more risk now the client is growing fast we can't keep up with the business we just have to let go if the client is now under regulatory investigation we don't want to be involved or government agency and we're not comfortable or they're involved in lawsuit you want you just want to leave okay now despite short-term gains if long-term risk surpasses benefit, the auditor may not continue because you don't want to, again, ruin the CPA reputation. Let somebody else take the fall. Also, you want to look at the continuing client and assess, change your audit risk or acceptable audit risk. So examining new client plays a vital role in determining acceptable audit risk. We spoke about acceptable audit risk in the prior session. We're going to talk about it more in the audit risk model, but let's see how does that affect accepting a new client. 
If the CPA firm deems the acceptable risk exceptionally low, what does that mean? There's, we could have 5%, 10%, 15 or any percentage. Remember, if we said 0%, it means we're taking no chances. We want to audit everything because we're not taking no chances. This is what 0% is. So the lower the audit risk, it means we're willing to take less chances. It means we have to do more work. We might decline the, the engagement because we're not comfortable. We have to do a lot of work, then it's not worth it. Lower risk tolerance generally lead to higher audit expenses, reflecting in elevated audit fees. Or what you can do is say, if you're going to do this, we're gonna, you're going to charge them a lot because you have to do more work. Maybe the client don't want to pay. Alternatively, if the acceptable audit risk is moderate and the client is acceptable, the firm will proceed, but we might raise the proposed fee. Because after a year, we learn more about the client and if that's the case, we may increase the fee if we're going to lower the audit risk if we have to do more work or we may not. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions by Farhat Lectures to kind of reinforce what we learn about up to this point. Which of the following statement is correct regarding audit risk? Okay, good. We just talk about audit risk. So there's going to be three incorrect, one correct. So it should be easy to spot the incorrect ones. Uh, let's start with B. Audit risk does not affect determination of the acceptability of new client. Yes, audit risk will. That's just because you have to determine the audit risk. How much risk are you willing to take? The lower the audit risk, the more work you have to do. Well, B is out because, you know, audit risk de determine, influence the acceptability of new clients. So that's an easy answer. Let's look at C. In case of low acceptable audit risk, it means we have to do more work. It would generally result in lower audit fees. No, it would result in higher because the lower the fee, the, you, the more work you have to pay. So C is out as well. Notice we're down to 50-50, either A or D. Let's look at D first. Let's look at A. In case the auditor conclude that the acceptable audit risk is low and the client is acceptable, the auditor may still accept the engagement and increase the fee proposed to the client. What are we saying here? If the acceptable audit risk is low and the client is acceptable, so so we have to do we have to do more work because we're taking less of a risk and the client is acceptable, we may accept the client and increase the proposed fee. Yes, we might do that. Yes, that, that's very reasonable. If the client is acceptable and low risk, we have to do more work, just we can compensate by increasing the fee, assuming the client agrees. Now A is a good answer, but let's see what D is. The auditor should not accept a new client known to take aggressive financial risk even if the management has a reputation of integrity. Well, hold on a second. Whether they want to take aggressive financial risk or not, that's based on their strategy, business strategy. I can live with if the management has integrity, has a reputation of integrity. So you could take financial excessive financial risk. Just because the company is taking excessive financial risk, I will shy, shy away from it. If it's taking excessive financial risk and there's a reputation problem, I would get out. Okay? So I would, I would accept, the auditor would accept a new client known to have taken aggressive financial risk with, with, with good management, the reputation of the management is acceptable. But if they're taking aggressive financial risk and there's a reputation of integrity that I'm out, therefore D is incorrect. As we, as, we, as we guessed, A is the correct answer. If the audit risk is low, but the client is acceptable, we just increase the fee and we'll keep the client. What should you do? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, MCQs true false additional resources that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate farhat lectures can help invest in yourself good luck and stay safe